During World War II, the term kamikaze became synonymous with a devastating and desperate tactic employed by the Japanese Empire. Kamikaze, which translates to divine wind in Japanese, referred to the use of suicide pilots who willingly crashed their aircraft into enemy ships, causing immense damage and loss of life. These pilots, often young and highly dedicated, believed that their self-sacrifice was a way to serve their nation and emperor in its time of dire need. The kamikaze tactics had a profound impact on the course of World War II, particularly in the Pacific theater. As Japan faced mounting losses and dwindling resources, kamikaze attacks represented a shift in the nature of warfare. These suicide missions posed a formidable challenge to Allied forces, raising questions about the ethical and strategic dimensions of the conflict. Understanding the significance of kamikaze tactics sheds light on the complex dynamics of the war and the sacrifices made by those involved. Historical Context To understand the emergence of kamikaze tactics, it's crucial to consider Japan's precarious situation during World War II. By the mid-1940s, Japan found itself on the defensive, facing an overwhelming Allied military force that had pushed deep into its territories. The Japanese Empire had already suffered significant losses in battles like Midway and Guadalcanal and its industrial capacity was strained. The country was isolated from vital resources, making the prospects of victory increasingly bleak. In this dire context, Japan sought unconventional means to resist Allied advances. The kamikaze tactics arose as a response to Japan's desperate circumstances. As the war turned against them, Japanese military leaders began contemplating ways to inflict maximum damage on the Allied forces with limited resources. The concept of using suicide pilots to conduct deliberate, high-impact attacks was born. These suicide missions were seen as a way to compensate for the numerical and technological superiority of the Allied navies. Kamikaze tactics were first employed in late 1944 and quickly gained prominence in the Japanese military strategy. The introduction of kamikaze tactics was not without controversy within the Japanese military establishment. While some saw it as a last-ditch effort to defend the homeland, others questioned the morality and effectiveness of such operations. Concerns were raised about the sustainability of sacrificing skilled pilots, the impact on morale, and whether the kamikaze attacks could genuinely change the course of the war. However, as Japan's situation grew more dire, these concerns were often overridden, and kamikaze missions became increasingly common, leading to a significant shift in Japan's wartime strategy, recruitment and training of kamikaze pilots. Recruiting kamikaze pilots was a meticulous process. Young volunteers were selected from the ranks of the Japanese military, primarily the Imperial Japanese Navy and Army Air Force. These recruits were typically in their late teens to early 20s. Specialized training programs were developed to prepare them for their fateful missions. This training included honing their flying skills, learning about the specific aircraft they would pilot, and indoctrination in the ideals of self-sacrifice and loyalty to the emperor. A typical kamikaze pilot was a young, often inexperienced, and deeply patriotic individual. They were often driven by a strong sense of duty to their country and emperor. Many came from diverse backgrounds, including students, farmers, and professionals. What united them was their willingness to make the ultimate sacrifice for what they believed to be the greater good of Japan. Kamikaze tactics encompassed various types of missions, each with its own set of objectives and execution methods. These included 1. Kamikaze air attacks. These were the most well-known kamikaze missions, where pilots flew aircraft, often laden with explosives, directly into enemy ships, 
causing massive damage. 2. Kamikaze naval attacks. In some cases, specially designed boats or ships, packed with explosives and manned by kamikaze crews, were used to ram and sink enemy vessels. 3. Human torpedoes. Japanese forces employed human torpedoes, essentially manned underwater missiles, to target enemy ships in covert underwater attacks. Notable kamikaze attacks and their impact. Several kamikaze attacks left a significant mark on the Pacific theater of World War II. Notable examples include the Battle of Lake Gulf, where kamikaze strikes severely damaged the American fleet, and the sinking of the USS Bunker Hill by kamikaze pilots. These attacks had a psychological and strategic impact on Allied forces, as they were forced to adapt to this new form of warfare. The sacrifice of kamikaze pilots became a symbol of Japan's unwavering commitment to its wartime cause. Even in the face of overwhelming odds, legacy and aftermath. As World War II drew to a close, Japan's situation became increasingly untenable. The devastating impact of the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, along with the relentless Allied advances, led to Japan's surrender on August 15, 1945. With the surrender, kamikaze missions came to an end. The tactic that had been born out of desperation and fervent patriotism had ultimately not altered the course of the war, but its legacy would endure in post-war Japan. Kamikaze pilots were commemorated and memorialized as national heroes who had made the ultimate sacrifice for their country. Monuments, museums, and ceremonies were established to honor their memory. Families of kamikaze pilots often took pride in their loved ones' dedication and considered them to be symbols of Japan's wartime resilience. Over the years, however, the legacy of kamikaze pilots has been viewed with more complex sentiments, as the immense loss of life and the tragic circumstances surrounding these young men's deaths have been acknowledged. <laughs>